Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Yet another attack so similar to some we've seen. This one again used a vehicle as a weapon, but this time the victims were not random. They were selected for their religion. The police, the Prime Minister, the Mayor of London all have gone out of their way to make clear they draw no distinction between the atrocities of Islamist madmen and a case like this. It was not just a hate crime, it was also terrorism. Well, it came just after midnight last night in the mixed area of Finsbury Park in London, near the mosque there, at a time when the Ramadan fast was over and several people were helping an elderly man who was taken ill on the pavement. John Sweeney has spent much of the day at the scene. He joins us uh, there now. John, we can see quite a lot going on behind you there. What would you say the feeling is there tonight? Well, Evan, the feeling is much calmer, to be frank, um, than it was earlier today, when it felt very, very feverish. This community is one of the most sort of mixed communities uh, all sorts, all religions, all kinds of people here, and they are doing an extraordinary effort, Muslims, Anglicans, Jews, Hindus, Sikhs, to, sort of, to get together, to sort of to refine the glue. Uh, and also, the other thing that's happening is we're finding more about the attacker. His family have released a statement tonight to say, listen, he was a troubled man, but we had no idea, but he was racist. And they've offered, also offered a, a big apology to the, the people who uh, suffered in this attack. But let's remember, this was an attack on people practicing their religion. It was solely targeted at Muslims, and as well as the pressure from the good people to sort of say, we're all one, the forces of extremism are sort of almost seeking, you can almost feel it, trying to rip people apart. And so it feels as though you've got two sets of extremists feeding off each other, the far right and the Islamist groups trying to tear society asunder. And the loser, it feels tonight, is common humanity. Every terror attack is different. But the weapon of choice for all attacks in London in the past four months has been a vehicle. Last night, the targets were Muslims who had just finished praying at Finsbury Park Mosque. An elderly man had collapsed with a suspected heart attack. People were tending the sick man when they were hit by a van. The man died. It's not clear whether as a result of the van attack and 11 people were injured. This footage, shot on mobile phones, shows the attacker being taken away by the police. He was named tonight as Darren Osborne from Cardiff. 47 years old. One of his neighbours told Newsnight that Osborne was an aggressive bully feared by people who live near him. As far as we can tell, he had no far-right digital footprint, no known connection with far-right groups and no trace that would have alerted security forces. He seems to have been, in other words, a clean skin. Today at Finsbury Park, the atmosphere jumped around sometimes sober, sometimes feverish. But one sign of hope, it was the mosque's imam who saved the attacker's life. We managed to surround him and to uh, protect him from any harm. Uh, we, stopped, uh, we stopped all forms of attack and abuse towards him that were coming from every angle. Can Britain take any more terror, Prime Minister? Four terror attacks on the run have exhausted everyone, Prime Minister included. The terrible terrorist attack that took place last night was an evil act born out of hatred and it has devastated a community. I'm pleased to have been here today to see the strength of that community coming together, all faiths, united in one desire to see extremism and hatred of all sorts driven out of our society. There is no place for this hatred in our country today and we need to work together as one society, as one community, to drive it out this evil that is affecting so many families. So the Prime Minister's 
come to the mosque, she's listened to people. But you get some indication of the anxiety of the government. They want to keep this community on side. And clearly, the Prime Minister's visit here today means the government is worried. Anger at the government, anger too at the media. A lot of people now, with the recent attacks, London, um, London Bridge, Manchester attacks, any person with no intellect would just read this, think, oh, Muslims, they're this, they're that, we have to fight back, we have to do this. But realistically speaking, this is the title the media has given it. And like I mentioned to you, murder is not from our religion. So any person who just reads this will think will automatically relate it to Muslims. So they will go out now and do things which they believe is revenge, when realistically speaking, it's just a radical action that they have no clue what, what is about whatsoever. So um, personally, yeah, I do believe the media does play a big part. The official crime statistics haven't come in yet. But figures collated by Tel Mama, a Muslim group, suggest that after the Manchester terror atrocity, hate crimes against Muslims spiked fivefold. Machisti was the highest ranking Muslim police officer in the country until he resigned last Tuesday. Well, let me just tell you, I, I was on duty and I led the response for Lee, uh, the murder of Lee Rigby, when at that time we had 22 mosque attacks, three of which were burnt down very conscious of not having a replay where hate crime also went up. So it was very much in our uh, strategy to be able to compound against that. And in Westminster we did that, in Manchester it didn't quite work, and by London Bridge I think it, it overwhelmed us. So it's not that we haven't had a focus or we haven't had plans, we have, and I can detail those. The fact of the matter is when you have three on a trot, it's something different. The goal of these terror attacks, starting with the killing of Joe Cox last year and the three atrocities claimed by Islamic State in the last four months, and now this one, is to sow division between communities. The danger is, it's beginning to feel as if they're succeeding. John Sweeney there. Well, think about what far-right or Islamophobic terror and Islamist terror have in common. On both sides, there's an adherence to the view that Muslims and the rest of us are not only in completely different tribes, but that we are at war with each other. There's also the possibility that attackers of both creeds may have certain mental health conditions, as some have put it, losers who put meaning into their lives via hate. But despite the similarities, we have tended to be more preoccupied with Islamist terror as the preponderance of recent attacks have come from that direction. Well, I'm joined by journalist Nezreen Malik, William Balde, who works on the Prevent Programme for the Home Office, and Darren Carroll, who was an early member of the far-right English Defence League and now campaigns against racism and far-right extremism. Very good evening to you all. Uh, Nezreen, does it feel different to you? This is, it's very unusual. This is targeted at one group. It's not a random attack which would take Muslims and Christians and anybody else targeted at a group. It does feel different um, for, for a couple of reasons. One is that just it's clearly targeted towards Muslims, it's outside a mosque, it's during Ramadan, it's unequivocally a hate crime against Muslims. Um, number two, I think because it's come on the back of a rising wave of anti-Muslim anti attacks after Manchester and London Bridge, etc., it seems like it's the culmination of kind of a, an accelerating trend, if that makes right. sense. Uh, uh, do you think the Islamic community is surprised? No. Scared? I mean, is it... it I think, I mean, this has been, this is particularly stark, but anti Islamophobic attacks have been right. kind of part and parcel of the life of Muslim communities for a long time now, whether it's abuse against women who wear hijab, whether it's incidents where people walking back from mosques are attacked or stabbed. Have you had abuse? I mean, do you give, give us an example of the, the sort well, of thing. Well, well like... I'm, not, I'm not visibly Muslim no. in the sense that I don't wear hijab. I don't, you know, when I do move around um, outside a mosque, etc., it's not, it, it's not as obvious no. as somebody who would wear maybe, you know, an, a, a face cover. Who, yeah. yeah, or a man in a, in a, you know, in a sort of cloak and a beard. It's about people who are very clearly, obviously, visibly Muslim, um, or in communities where there is a big critical mass of Muslims that, that are targeted um, and have been, have been for a long time. Yeah. Darren, Darren give, us, give us some insight into the mindset. So you were an early member of, the, of, of EDL. What was going on in your life that attracted you, if you like, to a message of hate? Well, at the time, in 2009, um, basically, I bought into the, uh, the narrative of them and us. Um, personally, I felt, looking back, retrospectively, disenfranchised. I didn't, um, 
I didn't realise it then, but looking back, being on the path I'm on now, um, I was. And um, basically, I wasn't happy with local governance in Luton. Um, and there was wages was, was dropping. Th there were, it had quite a big Muslim population, and they had one or two more extreme elements there, is that right? So it was kind yeah, of quite divided and yeah, tribal? Yeah, it was kind of, we were living our lives, and the way we were living our lives in Luton wasn't being portrayed correctly, I felt, mm -hmm. via the media or local newspapers, you know. Um, so disenfranchisement, you know, kicked in, basically. We, um, Vauxhall had shut a few yeah. years before that. Um, we were finding how much you, you don't use the word radicalized of yourself yeah. but did you meet people who were so hate filled that they would have yeah, committed were, random acts of violence against other types other other yeah i mean i was on demonstrations where people were actually you know really really angry and kind of not getting their words out that are angry you know they're trying to say two, two or three words in one out that are angry um so where that anger comes from i can only say that they they've bought into something and, and where did that saying come from um yeah i've just seen on tv there that the media played probably played it up a bit however um there was genuine concerns also um you know jobs apprenticeships yeah. housing so life was a bit unfulfilled was, and so all this yeah, well, stuff well, 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 william just in terms of the how, how many far-right people are, does prevent cover far-right or is it just about islamists no, Prevent has, uh, has covered far right formally since 2011 when the strategy was revised. As a practitioner working in it since 2008, uh, we've tackled it really from those very, very early days. And I've gone on record of talking about a young lad I worked with way back as far as 2008, who was at 10 years old, immersed in neo-Nazi ideology by a family member. And that came as quite a shock because in the early days of Prevent, it was very much around the Al-Qaeda narrative. Uh, but having sort of been cast out into communities, I was hearing communities come back at me and say, actually, there's other forms of extremism. Right, and, and so, but an interesting thing is is, 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 is the case of some of these people who Darren was talking to or was having conversations with, how much of a, how much of a link can you draw or a similarity can you draw between them and the Islamist fanatics? It's a really valid point, Evan. I've, I've always maintained, if you take away the ideology of, of say, a young Islamist and a young far-right extremist, the individual that's left below is very, very similar. The same psychological fractures, the same social factors that have led them astray, that have got them looking for, for answers from extremist organisations. And those organisations are there to offer those answers. They present the world in very binary terms, very divisive. You know, your report talks about sort of tearing communities asunder. That's what these extremist ideologues are trying to do of both persuasions. We don't know whether Darren Osborne was involved in groups or had friends, mates who were encouraging him. We do know he was 47, which is... I mean, that's not, that's not the kind of young, hot head that you, you think of. In fact, Khalid Massoud, who was the Westminster Bridge attacker, was 52. Is there something happening here on age? Um, possibly. I mean, we, we're, we're keen to sort of tackle the, the entire age breadth. So there's an awful lot of work goes on in schools and in colleges, building resilience, trying to break down sort of social stereotypes, particularly around Islam and around Muslims, because a lot of young people get their, their information from social media or mainstream media, which, which can be culpable in sort of painting negative stereotypes. But actually, we also work with, with people an awful lot older. Um, we did some outreach um, not that long ago, beginning of this year, around the far right specifically uh, in Prevent. And what we found was actually a lot of the younger people were, were quite well integrated and supportive of the local Muslim community centres, but their parents wow. still harboured deeply racist and, and sort of anxious sentiments towards Muslims. Let's talk a little about the, the media coverage. There was some degree of anger today that there was, uh, the, 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 we've drawn the comparison between these two types, but people saying, oh, you're new, you just dismiss one lot as mental health problems and the other lot are organised terrorism. It's, it's a very common response. There's uh, two sets of grievances. There's, whenever there is um, um, an attack by a Muslim, people feel that there is a perception or, a, or the way the media portrays it as a very coordinated, coherent, uh, 
culp uh, culpability on behalf of all Muslims, and that when the perpetrator. But that's not fair. No, 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 no one not, says it's no, all no, Muslims. No, no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not everybody's I'm not, always no, I'm not careful saying, to make sure no, that I'm no one. No, I'm not saying. Is, I'm not saying everyone yeah. does that, but I'm saying that there is a perception right. that that happens. Um, certain types of words are used, certain languages used. People um, ask questions like, what is the Muslim community's response to this? Um, and so people generally get the impression that there is a generalized culpability. Mm. Um, that impression is also then reinforced that when the attacker is not Muslim, um, the language is around kind of the fact that he is a misfit or that he is, you know, um, vulnerable. We heard that around mm. um, the Joe Cox murder. Um, there's lots of right wing tabloids that kind of portrayed him as someone who had fears of losing his council house, um, whose so mother trying to explain it exactly, away trying in to, a kind of more which is, which way, is which is fine, which may be the right thing to which do, is, incidentally, exactly, but do it for both sides. Exactly, if you're do exactly, it. which <laughs> is fine. It's either it's either an issue of individual disenfranchisement being preyed upon by ideology, or it is ideology, but it cannot be either one lot for one, one, one lot, and one, one for the, the other. other. Let's just finish. I, I mean, Darren, how did you get out of it? Well, gradually is the answer. You know, um, you you just end up not liking yourself and where you are so you sort of um, you have to fall back on kind of you, you go back to basics and that's what I did I just thought who am I I, I don't like myself um, so that, that's what I did I, I, I fell back on, on my upbringing um, I lost my parents when I was 13 so I, I fell back on I heard my mother's voice basically telling me you're not this person you ain't this person and and really that was, the, that was the beginning for me. I, I, I couldn't stomach it anymore. I really couldn't stomach it. So gra gradually is the answer to that oh, one. Happy yeah. now. Well, look, thanks all very much. Thanks very much for coming. Thanks. I've been